Good afternoon, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today, and I want to bring greetings on behalf of Premier Redford and, and our caucus. Uh, you guys uh, do such important work for us, and to have your first uh, annual conference together, I think, says a lot of the work that Alberta and the Canadian associations are doing, so I want to really thank you for the work that you're doing and know that uh, our ministry and our government uh, couldn't do the kind of work that we do without the support that you bring to us. So thank you to you, and I hope the morning has been a, a good morning for you. I thought what I would do today is just go over a few things um, that uh, are certainly important, what we're doing in our ministry that might be uh, important to you as well. Talk a little bit about the budget and how it affects uh, our ministry and therefore affects, affects yourselves. Um, talk a little bit, I know, um, our uh, uh, CEO of monitoring, Ernie Healy, I don't know if Ernie's in the room right now, but was with you earlier today. So just chat a little bit about that. And then our water conversations, uh, uh, touch on those, and then uh, leave a little bit of time for you for questions. I was saying that um, we're sorry to run late here, but we're also the planes are, are needing to get to the other part of the province as well to pick up some people. So I have to leave about 1.30, so we'll make sure I leave you some time for questions as well. So just to start with uh, the budget, uh, important for you to know our budget is $517 million between now that we've merged the two ministries of environment and sustainable resource development together. Um, so in that merger um, and, and our budget, we uh, see this year a reduction of $22 million, so just about 2% reduction that we have. Of that $22 million, about half, about $10 million is, uh, 9 10 million is, uh, is uh, bringing the two uh, departments together. So the integration of the departments, the efficiencies that we've gained by bringing two ministries together. Um, four million of it is for forest uh, fire management. So basically the reduction of that is the standby charges for equipment and for staff that we have early uh, throughout the season, but, but certainly early in the season um, that we're managing that piece as well. And so when we need to have the standby equipment, we will but we've had to tighten up a little bit there as well and try to find uh, so that we're serving uh, the areas in our ministry that are extremely important for us as well, as is uh, wildfire management. But that was some areas uh, that with the standby costs, uh, we, we felt we could uh, uh, trim the budget a little bit. And then we have $6 million in uh, grant reductions. And what we're doing is uh, all the core groups like yourselves uh, keep maintaining those core funding groups what we are looking at though, and I've had a chance to phone many different groups and, and chat with many of you, but for those that I didn't get the chance on budget day to get a hold of, it's important for you to know that how much I value as, as the minister in our department um, through our deputies and ADMs and staff, value the work that you're doing, but also Premier with regards to our ministry, I think um, uh, did fairly well with regards to the budget considering what some of the other ministries had to had to uh, cut and, and the percentages they had to take. So what we're trying to do with the six million dollars in reductions with regards to our grants is continue to fund all the core programs like yourselves but we may be stretching out some of those grant dollars where they were uh, projects that would be funded over a year, they may be funded over a few extra months so that we make sure that we continue to fund the work that you're doing, the important work that we need you to do, but uh, that's what, how we're looking at the ma majority of grants. There are some grants that um, won't be operationally funded, uh, but they don't re reflect uh, the core group work that we do with regards to uh, WPACs and the work that all of you do. So I want you to know that um, ourselves, uh, that that's important for us. Those are the main areas that um, were, were reduced in our budget. So it shows a reflection on, as, as I said, that some ministries had uh, huge reductions that they needed to find, uh, the importance that I, I as minister, but uh, more important that our premier and our government uh, puts on environment sustainable resource development and the, the importance of, of that across the province. So those are to deal with the budget uh, reductions. Um, very uh, proud of the work that's happening uh, um, with our joint minister, federal minister Peter Kent on the joint monitoring in the oil sands and the three year agreement that we came uh, together with that. We're just completing year one of that monitoring plan. And so uh, we're, we're quite happy with the work and the progress that has happened there. We're happy that uh, as well that industry has stepped up to the plate and as over the next three years as we roll out this plan, so the continuing two years that uh, up to $50 million they will pay with regards to the monitoring. And that's important uh, so that we can uh, double the monitoring for air, land, water and biodiversity in the oil sands region. Um, that's, that's an important piece for us and I think Minister Kent and I have uh, done a lot of work together to make sure that that will move forward. 
we're very uh, happy with the work, and, and I'm very extremely happy to have Ernie Huey as our CEO of Monitoring. He was an excellent deputy minister, and many of you I know know Ernie and the outstanding work he has done for our department and our government for years. And so we know he's going to take this to the next level where it needs to go, and we're very proud that he will continue on as CEO of Monitoring. Um, we are in the process, as you know, we have a, 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 a board that's established right now and moving towards an independent agency. Uh, that work is progressing very well, and I've asked Howard uh, Tennant and the group that are there, Howard is leading it as chair, to have that work wrapped up for us uh, in June so that we can move forward with the independent agency um, as well as with that agency. What's very important, uh, folks told us, uh, that to have um, that the science uh, um, be and data be independent of whether it be perceived or not of uh, industry or government interference and so this will have a science advisory board as well um, that will be able to uh, bring scientists from around the world to advise us on on the monitoring data that's there that data will then be independently reported as the time that I get it as minister and government gets it that Albertans and anyone else who wants to see that data that it would be reported uh, through a portal much like the oil sands information portal that we have already so the data is transparent it's independent of any any um, uh, government or industry or perceived uh, interference that people may say so that we truly have the data that's there I think it'll be great for us we've seen with the uh, information portal for the oil sands now that all that information was was public before but we brought it together under one information portal it's answered a lot of questions and the transparency piece is there that people can look at that anything that they want to know and so as well with this data will be very important that people have access uh, to the information that is transparent and that it's publicly available to Albertans, Canadians and anyone from around the world. That will deal a lot with our social license to develop as well and so if there's areas that we need to improve on that's the whole point of having these boards is that we would look for continuous improvement but also it acknowledges the work when there is positive outcomes and the monitoring of the data that we can see that too and we can speak to those pieces as well. So we're, we're very much looking forward to uh, bringing legislation for that to happen as well. As you know, we're doing the uh, land, land use plannings as well in the Lower Athabasca Regional Plan was approved in September of 2012. And that's uh, the first of the seven regional plans. We're moving, we've had uh, phase two of South Saskatchewan Regional Plan. And we'll, we'll now going back with what the RAC has told us and what uh, Albertans have told us by taking that out. And then we'll come back with a draft later on this year to uh, what the South Saskatchewan Regional Plan will look like. But with regards to the Lower Athabasca Regional Plan, uh, we're pretty impressed with the work that happened there, and especially when we look at uh, setting the triggers and the limits with regards to air and water and other areas, making sure that there, there are areas, when we look at cumulative effects management in this province, and in particular in the Lower Athabasca region, that the, the triggers are there to give us the early warning signs so that we never hit the limits. But what's intriguing about this piece, and when we talk, start talking about our social license develop, um, our, our product here in Alberta, we look now that uh, the work that we're doing here that's really, I think, uh, groundbreaking work around the world, as you see uh, Senator Kerry in the impact statement uh, with regards to, to uh, Keystone, has actually acknowledged the work that we're doing in the monitoring and acknowledge the work that's being done in the Lower Athabasca region. So acknowledging the work, a lot of the work that you folks and other of our stakeholders are doing to give that credibility to the work that's happening in Alberta. So I want to just say to you how much uh, we appreciate as well the work that you do planning and making sure that uh, uh, the dollars that are advanced to you that uh, we couldn't do the kind of work that we, we do without your, your help. And uh, we know that uh, dollars might be a bit tight this year, but we want you to know how important it is, it is for us to continue uh, the work that you do with regards to planning and issues management. The work that you do in education um, is so important to us. And I know last night we had some of you folks out at Rocky Mountain House, and it was so good at each one of our water discussions when we have uh, someone from the WPAC there talking about what important work you're doing and how that connects into our water talks. I know that means a lot to the people in the room, and I've had people comment on, on that to me, um, that you're there at the table with us and that the work that you are doing builds upon what we're doing with the water conversation, builds upon the work of Water for Life and that important strategy, but builds upon the work that you're doing in our communities. And, and so uh, it's, I really thank you um, for being partners with us in these water conversations. 
as you know, um, we've got, uh, uh, when Premier asked me to be Minister of Environment and Water at that time, she'd asked me to go and have a conversation with Albertans about water. Um, during uh, the election, um, people talked about uh, four specific topics, although there are many that are related to it, and uh, the conversations are open to anything Albertans want to talk about water. But we focused on four areas that people have asked us to come back and have input on, and that's water management. As you know, in the South Basin, uh, certainly a closed basin, it's an important issue and a discussion that's happening. But it's an important issue across the province, and it's not just a Southern Alberta issue, although we can use that as an example of how, in the rest of the province, we want to make sure we never get to a place where we have a closed basin. And if we work smart at these water plans and land plans, or 30, 50 year plans, so that we're looking for future generations, and as we work with you and others to make these plans uh, come forward, that we're looking long term and not just in our short election cycles, because water is too much of an important resource for us not to be thinking long term. So water management is, is one of the discussions. Uh, wa uh, wastewater and uh, drinking water infrastructure, of course, is very important. And how do we continue to deliver that? Um, as well in communities and how do we look at regional partnerships and regional systems. And we're getting some very good feedback on that as well. Healthy Lakes is one that certainly uh, in my five years as an MLA and certainly where I come from in our constituency of Drayton Valley, Devon, in particular the uh, Pigeon Lake, the discussion, but all the lakes across the province. People want us to have a solid policy. It doesn't mean that um, every, uh, every policy has to reflect the same lakes the same way, but we need to have good guiding principles with regards to healthy lakes. And so we've had some really good discussion about that. And then hydraulic fracturing has been an important one that uh, certainly people wanted us to talk about. The, um, first of all, the use of fresh water, um, the amount, uh, the education piece, uh, the amount of fracking that's going to happen um, in Alberta. And certainly the edu education uh, part has been a, a very important piece. What we learned from the land use planning was we assumed as a government, because we were talking uh, with stakeholders, um, and many of, of you uh, would have been part of that, that we all kind of knew what the conversation was, but many times we have these, these conversations and we just assume all Albertans know and are at the same place as we are at. And so what the learning from that is indeed, uh, we found out, is that Albertans uh, are busy working and raising their families and, and living their lives. And it, if it affects them, they may know about it and they may get engaged. But generally speaking, we're all busy in our lives. And so what we learned from that, and we brought it into this process for the water conversation and with uh, the regional planning process, is to have staff uh, experts and to have experts as it relates, for instance, with fracking, hydraulic fracturing, is that we have ERCB experts as well. And so through these processes, people can, we do a bit of education up front, but people can ask the questions that they have with regards to any one of those four topics um, and have uh, small groups to work in. And we're, we're hearing very good feedback about the process and what people like. And so I think that's been an important addition for us so that people have the chance to ask questions in particular areas, move from each section, um, of the four topic areas and uh, uh, we're getting feedback that uh, it's certainly a process that people appreciate. I think there's some areas that as we come forward with our What We Heard document after we complete uh, the water conversations this month and that people have a chance to go online or to fill out the survey or contact us once we have all that information and bring it together in a What We Heard document it'll be uh, important uh, that as we these talks are about informing policy because that's the one thing that Premier has asked all of us ministers to do, is to go out and talk about the policies. What areas are we thinking about? Come and talk to Albertans first. Come and talk to folks like you first and say, give us some feedback and some direction. So as when we develop policies, we get, we've gotten some of the feedback early from you versus us as uh, working with departments and creating policies and trying to come out and sell them to you, that we get really input from you early advice from you and so it's a new process that we're doing in our ministry and I know other ministries are as well because we think the public engagement process is very important. We've been having a lot of stakeholders uh, sessions in the afternoon first and then moving because we think that's important that the targeted stakeholders, many of you do this in your daily lives and so your questions become more technical um, than being able to have the opportunity for all Albertans to come out in the evening and ask the questions that are important to them more specific as it relates to their land or their own lives, 
And breaking them up that way, I think, is important, not to separate the two groups, but that so that our stakeholder groups have the opportunity that they need with more, more detailed information, but that Albertans don't feel intimidated because quite often we heard from them as well. Um, we've got many of you that are professional in these areas. They feel that maybe their question might uh, not sound as, as one that they should ask or that they should know about, so there's a little bit of intimidation. So we invite uh, the stakeholder groups to come in the evenings as well, but the reason we've separated up that way is really from a lot of feedback we've heard from people too, so that everybody has a chance uh, to be heard. I have to tell you, one of the we've had, I've tried to attend as many as I can. We were in the north and in the south, and this week, central Alberta. One of my favorites uh, uh, was when we were in Okotoks, we had a group of young university students and uh, SAIT students that came. Uh, there was a number of them, 20 or 30 of them that came out, and they have a whole different perspective. And then I met with a youth panel in Edmonton last Saturday, um, and it, they, they really just did bring a different perspective than what we were hearing at some of the other talks. So it's really good for us to be able to have these across the province. But when these are 30 and 50 year plans, that we go and we engage the youth because they're at a different place where they're thinking about it. They may not have all the background, but the thoughts and what they're adding to this process is exceptional. So I want to thank you for the work that you do. Thank many of you that I know in this room that have been to our water conversations and our regional planning conversations. And I invite you to please feel free to be engaged in that. And we look forward to as a ministry and as a government to continuing to work with you because we value your work and quite frankly as a department we can't do the kind of work that we need to do without you. So I want to thank you um, and leave it now for questions if there's any questions that people have.